Hey, my name is Lucas Ridley with Digital Creator School. I saw this really cool tutorial for Blender by Piali, Piali, Piali Fjord. <laughs> by Polyfjord, and I thought I'd try to recreate it as quickly as I can inside of Maya, let's go. So the first thing we wanna do is grab some animation for our character. For Mixamo, you have to create an account, pick your character first up here, and then choose animations. This is the Ybot character. I'm choosing the idle animation, click download, when you click download, you wanna make sure you have it with skin and I set mine to 24 frames a second because that's what we're gonna be using inside of Maya. Now inside of Fresh Maya, I'm going to go to File, Import, and bring in that animation. This way we know what scale to use when we're creating the tentacles. Then I'm going to create what I'm calling the tentacle rib by going to the poly modeling tool shelf and choosing the torus. And then I'm just going to reduce the subdivisions to three and five. And if I want, I can also extrude the center pieces and just by going to right click and going to face and then uh, clicking all of the faces and just control clicking the ones in the middle so we deselect them. And then I can hit control E to extrude and I'll just offset that by a small amount by holding down control. And then I'll hit control E again and increase the thickness by a little bit. So now we have our rib and then we can go to the animation tab, go to mash, go to create mash network, go to instancer and hit apply and close. Now we can go to the attribute editor and we can go to distribute and turn that to linear. And then we can just turn the distance down to zero because we're going to be placing this on a curve that we create. And we need to create the curve and this torus in the scale that we want. So I'm gonna to go to R and click the original torus here that is now hidden. I'm just gonna scale this up so that we have it some kind of size that's going to be relative to this character. Then I'm gonna to go to the front view and I'm going to create a curve. I got to the front view by holding down spacebar, left clicking, and then dragging my mouse. I'm gonna to go to the curves tab and click this little button here to create curves. I'm just going to click three times. So I'll go one, two, and three, and then I'll hit enter. Now we can go to the mash waiter here, jump over to mash, create a curve attribute by a uh, node by hitting add curve node. And then we can just middle mouse drag curve one in here. Now that has attached our uh, tentacle rib to the curve node. And we can just increase the step size here and we can go to distribute and then just increase however many that we want. Then we can rotate the original in line by holding down J and dragging the rotation manipulator there. And then of course we can scale this however that we want that to go along the curve. So now we can create the rig for the curve. So let's isolate the curve by selecting it and going to isolate, isolate select. Then we can right click and choose control vertex and then select each one of the control vertices and go to the form and click cluster. And we just need to repeat this process. You can hit G on your keyboard to repeat the last action. Now let's rig those clusters to curves with a script I've created and you can download at the link in the description. And I will demonstrate in that how to create this button on your tool shelf. So we can go and select each one of these cluster handles from the outliner, uh, shift left clicking, and then just click the script. And now we have a control uh, curve if we unisolate select for each one of these that is probably quite small. So I'm gonna shift select all of them and isolate select them. And then now we can go in and right click to control vertex each one of these, and then we can scale them all up together. You can scale them all up together by holding down R, left clicking, and going to component mode. Now I can unisolate select and then scale these according to the scale of our rig. Now I can right click, go back to object mode, and I can hide these cluster handles because we don't need them anymore. And they are now attached to these curves. And we can now animate the tentacle based on the position of these curves. Now, these last two at the ends are basically intended to follow this, the ends, or you could leave them free. If you want to follow the ends, you can just select these and you can find their parent group. And then the next one that it's supposed to be parented to toggle down. And then we can just middle mouse drag that to that curve. So now that will follow the end. And then we can rotate those together and have the extra control there if we need it. So now we basically only have three controls once we do that for the end as well. So I'll find that one and the end. So I'll toggle that one down and then middle mouse drag the secondary control into that one. So now those follow uh, each other there and we still have that. And then we just have one in the middle to control that middle position. 
Now let's create the end claw. We'll first unhide the original torus so we have an idea of how big we want the claw pieces to be. We'll go to poly modeling, create a cube, and then just drag this out and we can get started basically modeling this thing. And I'm gonna zoom in here with F, right click, go to vertex mode, and then I'll just drag this out as far as I think I need for that. I'm gonna hide the character for now so that we can model this. And then I'll scale this up and go back to vertex mode, scale that out to match the claw kind of triangle that we've set here. Then I'll grab the end pieces and then I'll just scale those together and scale those down slightly. And then I can scale this end up if I want a little more thickness there and pull that back. Now we can right click, go to object mode, and then go to the knife tool and hit control shift. And then at 50%, we can set a new edge loop. Then I'll right click, go back to object mode. And then under rigging, I will choose the joint tool. And then I'll jump into the front view, hit F and toggle down here and hit four. And then we can hit a joint on this and then I'll hold down shift to keep it in a straight line and go right on that edge loop that we created and then all the way to the end and hit enter. Then I'll select both joints and then the geometry and go to skin under the rigging tab and go to bind skin. Now we have the claw. If we jump back to five, we can see the shaded mode and now we have the claw. We can see that there's a little bit of weighting issue here on the end, that this is influencing the end. So we can just jump into paint weights very quickly under the rigging tab. We can click this icon and then we can jump into the uh, tool settings here and we can dock this over here and jump to joint one and jump to joint two and we can say replace and we can bring the value down to zero and we can increase our stroke brush here by going to radius and increasing that. And we can just replace these vertexes down here with zero. So now that when we rotate this, it should have no, almost no influence on the end pieces there. Now what we can do is select the cube and go to edit, duplicate special, hit the option box window here, pull this out and we want, I'll hit reset settings. And what we want is copy and duplicate input graph and we want two of them. And then we can hit apply or duplicate special to close that window. And then all we have to do is rotate the joints and holding down J, I can go one, two, three, four. And then we can get this in line here by hitting the red button. So that will isolate it on this axis and then do the same thing for the other claw. So hold down J and then one, two, three, four, and then pull this in line here. And then I'll look through the right view, holding down, spa holding down space bar, left click, right view. And then I can line these up a little bit better, hitting four. And then I'm looking at the corners here so that they all kind of match up to their corners. and inspect down here and it looks like they are matching up as well there. I can go back to perspective. Then I can actually connect these up so that they uh, all work together. So now to get all of these to work together, we just need to make sure their rotation axes are all working in the same direction. If I hold down E left click and go to gimbal, we can see that the Z is showing up for all of these. So what we can do is go to the joint here and go to rotate order and choose anything that has Z at the beginning. So now when we hit E, we can see that the rotate Z is actually working in the axis that we would expect instead of similar to the world axis as it was. So now we can do that for both sets of joints. Open up Windows, Node Editor, and we can bring in each one of these joints by clicking this button and it will map them out. Then we can simply map one joint to the other. And I know joint one is the first joint I made. So that's the, the main joint. So all I need to do is toggle down, rotate 
for both of those and then input rotate Z for both of these joints so that it is going to drive the rotate Z of the other joint. So we'll only have to control one. So when I close this and rotate the first joint, now they are all moving together. And we can do that for the second pair of joints here. So I'll just select all three of those, go back to Windows, Node Editor, and I can map those in and out points here. And joint one, um, or rather this will be joint two now. You can also click this button up here to toggle it down if it's difficult to do the uh, double click method. So I will map rotate Z of this joint so that it controls the other rotate Z's. Click this, toggle this down to get to rotate Z, and then I'll just map in that rotate Z into that rotate Z. So now when I close this, this one should control those others as well. So now we can do whatever we want to with that. They are moving independently of each other. So we can actually group all of these joints together by hitting Control G. And then now we can move that as a singular group. I'll group the geometry and call that Claw Geo. And I'll call this Claw Joints. Now all we have to do is position that where we want it the group of the claw joints there. And we can rotate that down into position. We can even scale this down if we want to better align with the tentacle. And we can also hide these two joints that we no longer will need to control. So I will just select both of those and hit Control H so that now we can only select the ones that matter. So I'll rotate that out into a little better position here. So now we have our claw and we need to parent this to this control so they move together. So we can toggle this down and go to that control, which is this one. Then let's control click the claw joints group here and we can go to constrain, parent constrain, open the option box and make sure we have maintain offset on and add that. Now the if we go hold down E and left click, we can go back to object mode so we can freely rotate. And now we have the claw moving there. Now we can see that if we start rotating, it's sliding through the mesh there. So if we wanna have a little cleaner uh, geometry there, we could just make a new torus and then control click the control joints group, go to modify, match transformations, and then match uh, all transformations. And then we can choose the torus here and scale it up and rotate it into place so that we have a little bit of a different type of geometry here that'll help marry those two um, situations. And then we can move the joints out if we want to as well so that they better match up with that torus. And now we can parent the torus to the control, uh, the claw joints group, so that it will rotate with the claw themselves. We can also change that if that doesn't match the kind of style we want. So we can go to this type of uh, geometry and choose five as what we did before, or something a little smoother like 10 and then scale that up a little bit. Hey, I just wanted to take a second to say thanks for watching this video. If you like, comment, subscribe, it really helps and motivates me to create more videos and tutorials like this. And don't forget to check out digitalcreatorschool.com for all of my other courses. And of course, if you're interested in working in animation as a job, I wrote an entire book about that. You can get for seven bucks at ebook.digitalcreatorschool.com. So now we just need to clean up how our outliner looks because we're going to reference this scene in. So I'm going to control hide the curve. Then I'm going to deselect everything and hit control G to create a new group. Then I'm going to shift click the end 
control there and go to modify match transformations, match translation. And now I want to group everything that's going to be moving the curve into this group. And that is all of the controls. So I'm going to jump over to all of these offsets and I'm going to move them into this new null group and call this claw mover group. So now we can move the entire system and we can rotate it independently. So we have another layer of control there. We could also create a new curve there as well if we want to control it with something visible. So I can go to uh, NURBS curves circle there and control click the claw mover group, go to modify match, transfer match transformations, match translation, and then we can right click this, go to control vertex, and then just make this kind of a unique looking curve by scaling in every other um, control vertex there, right click, and now we have a cool independent control, which we can then put under the claw mover group and then put everything else by middle mouse dragging there. And we can say claw mover control. If you wanna change the color of these, just go to the attribute editor and go to the control shape, toggle down object display, toggle down drawing overrides, enable overrides, and then choose your color from the slider. So now we finished creating our claw tentacle. If we wanted to add some inner geometry to this, in case when we stretch this out, it's a little too far, all we have to do is go to curve, go to create sweep mesh and create a mesh. Then all we have to do is just mess with the attributes of the sweep here. If we want to, we can have multiple uh, there and we can increase the number of instances. We could scale them up. We can also scale the profile by increasing them here. And we can decrease the number of instances if we want. So I'll reduce the mesh size by going to scale instances and also scale profile until they get in the center of the triangles. You can also add a twist to those so that, the, so that you can't see all the way through them. And you can also increase that number there. So now we can select the control and zero that back out to get back to the default pose that we created at the beginning. And we have the mesh inside created. We have the tentacle and we just need to clean up the outliner. So I will uh, shift select everything that we've created here, including the torus and hit control G and call this tentacle group. Now I can actually delete the original character here because we're going to bring in references. So I want to save this file out by itself. So I'm just going to simply delete those and I'm going to hide the original mesh here because we also don't need that at the world space. Control H and then I'm going to toggle that down and save this file. I'll call this tentacle rig and I'll save as. I'll create a new scene and I will import the animation that we downloaded for the character by going to File, Import. So now we have the character animation back in. Now all I have to do is go to File, Reference Editor, hit the plus button and choose Tentacle Rig and reference that in. So now we have one arm. All we have to do to create the other arms is to duplicate this reference a couple more times. So now we have four arms and we have this main control here where now we can rotate this exactly how we want each arm to be displayed on the back of the character. So we can just position these however we want. So now that we have positioned the arms the way we want them, we just need to connect them to the body. So we need to turn on the x-ray mode here and then choose the chest joint and then toggle down the first tentacle a group here. We can go to claw mover group, control click that, and we can go to constrain, parent constraint, and make sure we have maintain offset and hit add. Then we can do that for each one of the other groups. So I'll select the chest joint again, toggle this one down, go to claw mover group and hit G because that is the last command, a uh, shortcut for the last command, which is that constrain, and then control click this one and repeat for the last as well.
So now when this plays back, they are attached to the body, but we can also see that I forgot to turn off the time interval on the mash network. So any updates we wanna to make to the tentacle rig uh, will go to this scene because we referenced it in. So let's hop back in and we can make adjustments to that tentacle rig and it will update in this scene as well. So let's save this scene first. Back in this tentacle rig, we can go to the mash waiter, go to the curve node here, and just turn off animation speed from 5.5 to zero. Now when it plays back, it won't be animating. Now if we wanna make any other adjustments like adding caps to the sweep mesh, we can do that. If we missed anything or if we wanna add stuff, we can do that as well. So we can click caps here so those get closed off and we can adjust anything else and it will update in the scene that we were just in. So I'm gonna pull this out and then grab these inner edges and scale them in. I'll hit save and then open up the scene we were just in and those updates will be in that scene now. So now when we hit play, those updates have gone through and I can turn off X-ray mode and hit Alt-1 to hide the curves. Now we can create an infinity plane, which I have another video about. Then we can add shaders to the tentacles and to the background. We could also add the shaders to the original tentacle rig file and then save that and then reopen this file. So I can create a shader by clicking on the mesh, right clicking, going to assign new material. And then I can choose an Arnold shader if I want. Go to AI standard surface is the common one. And then we can jump over to that tab and then change the color to whatever we want. I can also change the color of the character if I want by selecting the mesh and going to that material and changing it there. If we want to create a shader for the rig in this file, we want to make sure that we're applying the shader to these two pieces of geometry because these are instances along the tentacle. All of those ribs, we aren't applying shaders to that. We're, we want to apply the shader to the original uh, torus that we created. So we can click that, right click anywhere, and choose assign new material, AI standard surface, and put in the color that we want. Make sure if you're putting in RGB values that you change it from rendering space to display space. Save and then reopen the animation file and those changes will be there. Now all we have to do is create some lights and we're almost done. So I'll go to the rendering tab, I'll click a spotlight, and then I'll move it into place. And I need to turn on spotlights in the viewport, so I'll click, or lights in general, so I'll click this button, and then I'll also turn on shadows, and I'll rotate this spotlight into place. Alternatively, I can go to panels, look through selected, and I can manually navigate around so that I can point the light exactly where I want it to, like I, as if I'm looking through it like a flashlight. I can increase the cone angle. I can also create some fall off here and turn on decay and then crank up the intensity to uh, account for that decay. And then jump back to perspective mode here. And I can control D duplicate it and move it around the scene to add some fill lights. Now to see this in the Arnold render view, you will want to adjust the Arnold tab uh, exposure settings. So if we open up Arnold, open Arnold render view and hit play, you can see they aren't really matching the scene. So what we can do is go down to the Arnold tab here and make sure all the lights have an increased exposure. Now some cool things about this setup is the fact that you can animate this um, if I jump over to shading, use default material, it'll, it's a little easier to see the curves. And I can select them and of course hit keyframes. By clicking S, I can hit keyframes. And under the channel box, I can see those as red tick marks. So I can adjust that by hitting S. And I can pull that out, scrub forward in time, and adjust that animation. And it will in fact animate between those two points. If I do pull the tentacle too far and the ribs get to be too much, I can actually go to this tentacle rig setup and find which mash network it has, which is rig one here. So then I can jump over to it and I can increase the amount of distribution. So I can just 
increase the number 25 and just add as many ribs or reduce them as much as I need. The quickest way to see your animation is to create a play blast by right clicking on the timeline and going to play blast and choosing quick time. If you don't have quick time installed, you need to install it to get those codecs and then just save that out as a movie file to make sure that's saved out. Click that checkbox. Or if you want to create a batch render, you need to go to the render settings over here, going to rendering and get the render menu up and go to render sequence. But first you want to make sure that your render settings are correct because the default ones don't actually render animation. So we have to choose name.number.extension, and then we can choose the frame range, which is one to 200, and we can set our resolution down here to be something like 720 or 1080. It's going to take a lot longer if you choose 1080, and then we can adjust the camera samples here. If we wanna increase them, we can increase them from three to four or five, and then we can go to render and render sequence. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you want to learn more with me, check out digitalcreatorschool.com where you have all the classes that I've taught. It's over 76 hours of tutorials and courses, and it will get you on your way to learning Maya and becoming an animator. I'm about to open a mentorship program to the first few students, and it's going to have many, many, many hours of, le of new lessons that I just am getting done recording now, and I'm gonna have one-on-one -on -one reviews with enrolled students, so stay tuned for that. That is called Animator's Journey, and you can sign up for notifications for that down in the link in the description for Animator's Journey. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Let me know if you wanna see more stuff like this. Thanks for watching.